Hello and welcome to What Happens If, a new series on the channel here where we will try to explain what happens when you do something. For example, what happens if we insert our XT IDE card in the wrong way in our computer? So most of you are probably familiar with the XT IDE card, this 8-bit ISA card that you can slot into a free ISA slot on your old PC, giving it access to an IDE connector where you can hook up a compact flash card. Now, because this thing doesn't have a bracket, it's very easy to insert it in the wrong way. This is the correct way, so the components should face this way. However, it is very easy to insert the XT IDE card the wrong way. Now, what happens when we do this? So let's find out. Because this happened to me, I was in a hurry and I inserted the card this way. And in the name of science, I'm going to explain you what went wrong and how I fixed it. Now, when I turned on the machine, the following happened. Nothing, nothing came on the screen, no memory count. So obviously the first thing you do then is you shut off the machine and you realize the stupid mistake that you've done. So you look into the PC and you attempt to correct your error as soon as possible. So we insert the XT IDE in the correct way, boot the machine, yes, we have the memory prompt. But what we don't have anymore is the XT IDE functionality. Now, just to reassure you, there are only five components on this board that are potentially dead right now. And these five components are actually pretty low cost components because these boards use off the shelf commodity components that are very cheap. So let's get our IC removal tool here and focus on the most important chip here of which I have a couple of spares. But to understand what went wrong, we need to look at the ISA slot layout. And here I have a main board with an ISA slot. And as you can see, there are two rows of pins in this slot, and it's marked with a B side and an A side. The A side is typically referred to as the component side, which is the side of the card where all the components are. Now, each of these rows has a designated pinout. The B side of the ISA slot is typically the power rails and the A side is typically more logic level lines. So when we insert the card in the correct way, we see that there are a limited number of pins here that have been uh, mounted on the card for the power rails. However, when we flip the card, we see that the address lines are going to be exposed to all of the power rails on this ISA slot meaning that there will be dangerous voltage levels like the 12 volt minus 12 volt that will go directly into this flash rom card as you can see in the design here the flash rom is hooked up directly to the isa bus so all of these pins here which are normally used for logic levels will now be exposed to dangerous voltages and that will fry the flash rom chip rendering the xtid card useless I'm going to move to my Pentium system here, which has the XT IDE software on the hard drive. Now you don't need to use a separate PC for this. You could just as easily do this on a machine where you want to install the XT IDE card. You just need to be able to boot from a floppy on that machine where the XT IDE software is available. The way that these XT IDE cards work is that you can flash them just by inserting them in a computer with a free ISA slot and then from that computer within MS-DOS you can load up a flash utility. But what happens when I turn on the Pentium here with the XT IDE card in it? Absolutely nothing. We don't see anything on the screen and this confirms that there is definitely something wrong with the XT IDE card. So let's pop it back out and take a closer look. So the main chip that you see here marked SST is actually our flash memory chip. It's the chip that has the memory space available to hold the code that will be executed when the PC starts. And that software is the XT IDE Universal BIOS. Now I said before that the board uses uh, commodity chips and this chip costs about 1.3 euros so it's very cheap even if you just buy a single unit now we are going to be putting a new uh, flash memory chip here onto the board it has this little notch here that you need to align and what you'll also see is that when you buy these ICs that the legs are a little bit bent outwards making it very difficult to attach them uh, into the socket on the board 
So before trying to insert it, I tend to bend the pins inwards a little bit just by pushing on all of the uh, pins like so. And it makes it for a much nicer fit on the socket. So you just put it up there and you just pull it in and it should slide right on in. So now we have a new memory chip, which obviously is still blank, hooked up to the board. So let's hook this up to our PC again and see what it does. And as we start the PC, we see that it already boots, which is a good thing. And I will go into the command prompt so that I can look into the XTID folder I have on this machine where the binaries and the flash utility resides. So there is a flash utility here that you can execute in MS-DOS and it will allow you to write a ROM image file right onto the memory chip just using your computer. You don't need any programmer. You just need to type in the following command, flash the ROM image, which is the IDE underscore XT dot bin and the memory address where the XTID card expects the program to be. But as you can see, this ends with a failure. We are unable to flash the device, so let's see what's going on. Now, more modern PCs support something which is called BIOS ROM shadowing. This is a feature that allows the computer to load programs which are normally residing in ROM, which is very slow memory, to copy that ROM memory into the RAM, pointing to the same address. Now this will give the computer much faster access to the code, but it will also write protect that code, which will cause issues when we attempt to flash the XTIDE card. So we will need to disable the shadow ROM here by going into memory resources and reserve the memory space. As you can see here, we have configured the car to use the ROM address C800, defined by Jumper2. So we'll go and select C800 as the reserved memory base. We'll give it a length of 64K, which should be sufficient. And that will allow the computer to freely keep the C800 code in ROM so that we can flash the XTID card. So after reserving the memory at C800, let's execute the command again. And now we can see that it's both erasing and programming the chip. And after a reboot, we see that the XTIDE is showing itself on the computer. So let's insert the XTIDE card back into our old PC. And Lord and behold, as the PC is starting, we again see the beautiful XTIDE menu and the computer can now boot again from the compact flash card. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've covered a lot of ground here. We discussed the uh, flash ROM on the XTIDE card. We've looked at how to replace that flash ROM. We also saw how modern PCs use BIOS ROM shadowing that could interfere with the flashing process. And we've looked at how to flash the card. So in the end, all is well. I don't advise you to put this thing in the ISO slot in the wrong way, but at least now if you do, you know how to fix it. So thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye bye.